Our second testimony comes from Michelle, who in the midst of her loss of relationship found the power to be able to minister to women now to the point that she is a mentor to many women that have learned how to deal with loss. Here is Michelle. Originally, I began to journal during the breakup of my marriage um, and impending divorce. The thought of the other side of through came from how I felt inside about what was happening to me. Um, not so much going through, but, but being thrown away um, as a woman, as a wife, and as a family. And so in thinking about it so much, that's where the title, the thought, and everything in me came from. To, to, to experience being discarded. Um, and I, I don't know if I ever felt so great, um, that feeling, and that's where it came from. And I just began to journal about that. Thinking about going through it again, would I choose that? You know, thinking about questioning this day, today, would I choose it? At this moment, I would say, no, because of the pain, but there's always something in me that would say, I understand it now, um, that you have to go through some things in your life in order to grow and be strong and to, and to get courageous and to see God and all of his glory and his facets of his, of his uh, how he gives us hope and joy and peace and comfort. So a little part of me understands that now on the other side that it it was worth it. But you know the pain of it, I would not want to experience that again. I believe that God allows us to make choices and in those choices there are consequences that are going to come about that you cannot imagine. So God gives us, I, I heard a, a pastor say this, God is, in the, God is light, he's always in the light, and he's saying, come into the light, this is where I'm at, but I'm not gonna force you into the light. So we, we've made, I've made choices, there were things that occurred because we live in a sin-filled world and we cannot see, Satan puts before us this blinder. And so you can't see all of the consequences because you know it looks good, that, that ice cream looks really good. But I know that it's going to cause me some problems later. Uh, but I don't really know how much until those problems occur. So God allowed it to happen. I do not believe it was God's choice for my life, but he used it for good. Well, going through what I think was the worst time of my life uh, and the pain that is associated with betrayal and separation and divorce and what I think, what I call a family being torn apart is immeasurable. It is almost indescribable. Um, I can remember, one of the first severe pains I can remember is that um, when I saw my ex with his girlfriend, and it, that was a shock, but it was like a shock like, okay, is this happening? This is happening. But really, is you know, going through that. But I remember clearly feeling that I knew at that moment what a broken heart felt like. Um, hearing about it, singing songs about it, but feeling it internally, um, like a shattering, 
and a heaviness that you're just going to be, you're knocked down and you do not know how you're going to get up. And, you know, because it was a long process, I felt many times pain in different ways, whether it was physical. I felt physical pain. I, I felt emotional pain. I even felt spiritual pain. Um, maybe not, um, like I didn't please God enough for him to keep my marriage together or with something that I needed to do that I didn't know to do. Um, or, or, or all of these feelings and emotions that are shooting at you and coming at you from the left and from the right and from behind and from internal and external. And so through that process, pain became a relative that I, that I wanted to go back to where he came from. And I didn't know how to get him back there. Well, during that time, I can say with such gratitude in my heart that I have the best family in the world. Small family, but um, we really stick together in the worst of times. And during that time, which was compounded, was the fact that um, we lost uh, my brother to uh, cancer and then my nephew to cancer. So our family, uh, we really took a blow. Um, and then this was just something added. So we were all struggling with our grief and on, on grief on top of grief on top of grief. But we, I was able to share with them honestly how I felt. If I was angry, I said I was angry. If I was mad, I was able to share that. And I, they listened, cried with me, got angry with me, um, joyful with me, loved me when I couldn't, didn't feel like loving myself. Um, I have a great network of friends that I've been friends with for over 30 years and they walk with me through this process. Um, and I must say, and in my book, I remember um, there's a chapter that says, praise is what I do. And I remember clearly telling the Lord this. I said, Lord, I don't know about a lot of things, but I know if I can still praise you, that I'm gonna make it. And so I press my way to church and you know, we have a church where we're, we're vibrant and the Word of God is being preached and I felt hope in church uh, while I was there and then sometimes I would leave and feel hopeless again. But I, I was going through that process. Um, and so I had sisters in church that, you know, had been through and told me their stories which encouraged me. And that's why it's important for us to tell story, our story because we don't know how our story is going to help someone else. And they told me their story and I looked at them and I said, well, they made it, you know, and so it gave me hope to see them. And I pray that, you know, my story is going to give someone that same hope. I think part of my journey was finding out that our titles are just part of us, but they're not all of us. And I had to find that out. And sometimes, because God knows me better than I know myself, he knows that I need to learn from experience. And I love now being a mother and a grandmother and an aunt and a cousin and a friend. I love that. And, and I think that I understand those titles um, in the context that they are, that they are just parts of who we are. But we are God's children first. And if I'm not operating as his child, then I really can't operate as a mother or a daughter or a sister or a friend in, in a way that's really honest and authentic. And I think for women in Christ now, 
that we have to find out that we are significant in Christ first. And then from that, our gifts will flow. Um, the things that God has uh, ordained us and purposed us to do. But if we're operating from, I'm a mother based on what this person says a mother should be or that person or, or even what I thought or was taught apart from Christ, then it's, it's not a full person. I'm, I'm a mother, I, I am Michelle and I'm Bibi, that's my nickname. Um, and I am mom and I'm my mom. But ultimately, my greatest title for me and for women should be I'm a daughter of the king. And G God is my father. And because of that, I can bloom in all of the titles that we have or that I have. But I can only bloom knowing who I am in him. Uh, throughout this journey, I had um, just many nights of sleeplessness. Many nights of thinking I was never going to stop crying. And I remember one night in particular, right near the end, I didn't know it was the end, that I was not going to make it. I had it. This was enough. It's too hard. I love you, God. I know you love me. But I'm just not going to make this. And I remember reaching out to two sisters and saying that to them. And they encouraged me. So I encourage the woman who's watching this, connect yourself with sisters who love you just because of you and who, who are walking with you. They're there, I'm there. And I'll say that at that moment, I remember calling one of my dear friends and saying that to her. And she said, Michelle, the enemy doesn't want to take your life. He wants to take your testimony. I will never forget that word because after hearing that and knowing that God had a purpose for my life, that was greater than divorce, infidelity, betrayal, or anything that could come my way. And that he had called me out to this task, to live through this, to make it through the other side, that I then could do it with God because he had never left me, he never forsook me, he walked with me, I was in the word of God and his word began to bubble up in my heart that I could do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me, that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I could ask or think and that the purpose of my life was to live and the purpose of your life, sister, is to live, to live because there is the other side. There is joy, there is hope, there is peace. I'm talking about a peace that you cannot imagine until you get through. And then you look back and you can say, well, I'm stronger, I'm wiser. I know who my God is, that God is everything that he said he is, and that you can live through this and that you can make it and you can tell your story and your story will help someone else live. Isn't that a blessing? That what we go through, that God doesn't leave us in that place. Job said, naked I came into this world and naked I will leave, but blessed be the name of the Lord. And then in Job 42, he says, I thought I heard of you but now my eyes have seen you. And you can only see God sometimes 
in the midst of what you're going through. But then after you see him greater, you see him larger, you see those characteristics of God that you read about, that you heard that you heard about, but now you see it inside for yourself. And then you know it and nobody can snatch that from you. Nobody can take that from you. Somebody could tell you God, a he God is a healer, but I know God's a healer now. Someone could tell you that God can mend a broken heart, but I know that God mends broken hearts. I know that for myself. I'm, I'm in agreement with the word of God because I've, been, I've experienced it and nobody can take that away from me. No one could come along and say, your God is false. No, he's not. He's real and he heals and he delivers and he sets free and he mends broken hearts and he wipes away your tears. And guess what? You can actually go on and love that person in a way that you would never been able to love them apart from God giving you the grace to get through what you're getting through. You can do it. You can do it. You can make it. You can make it. You can make it. And I dare to say you will make it through the other side.